delay by today. So this MacBook claims to have no image on the screen. Let's try and figure out why there's no image on this ancient A1278 old pile of junk. Plug in this dirty MacBook. And we have a gray screen. However, the gray screen does not produce an Apple logo or a Pictar. So I'm going to wait for it to boot a little bit, see if we get any question mark folder or anything like that. But the first thing we got to do, since we're not getting anything on the screen, is check pin 3 on the LCD connector. That's where the LCD VDD is. So VDD is going to be the power going in to something, and LCD is the LCD, and 3.3 volts is power going into the LCD, and that's supposed to be on pins 2 and 3. So the first thing to measure here is pin 3 on the LCD connector. Actually, and I was just about to unplug the sleep sensor, but as you may be able to see or not, the sleep sensor is actually not plugged in. So great, somebody already fucked that up. That's, that's just great. All right, so let's measure pin 3 on the LCD connector and see what it is we find. Hey, look, a tear on a solder trace. Do we even really need to measure this with a microscope? Is there measuring required here? I don't think we need to measure that. I think we know exactly why this has no picture. But I'm going to measure it anyway. So let's see how many volts the screen is actually getting. So the screen is supposed to be getting 3.3 volts. And according to this, on pins 2 and 3, we get 0.8 volts. Now here's the interesting part. And here's the thing that a lot of people miss, and I used to miss in the beginning as well. You see that the screen is gray, right? Hey, you're back! Oh. Don't leave us ever again. Uh, come back to work, please. Everybody we've hired has been a total idiot. We need you back. We miss you so much. I'll double your pay. You'll get the best health care. You'll get flowers and a cake every and tea and chocolate three times a day. And we'll get you another cute kitty cat. And I'll get you a Mercedes. Come I back. <laughs> Come, I'll get you a better Mercedes. Uh, How about a Bentley? <laughs> I miss old employee. I'm sorry for that interruption. We had an ex-employee come back that we missed terribly. We're trying to convert from ex-employee to employee. We miss Veneera. So this here, this screen, it looks like it's turning on, right? You see how it's gray? The re well, it's gray, so people will think the screen is turning on, but it's not. This screen will actually turn on even if it has 0.5 volts. Any, even though the screen needs 3.3 volts to function, you will get this general grayness of it just starting up with 0.5 volts. So it, the screen looks like it's turning on, but it's not. And this will especially confuse you if you have a case where the inductor looks good. Now here, the inductor looks like trash, so I mean, it's, it's obvious that what's going on here. You I mean, you don't need to be a genius to check this out. But if this inductor is not blown up and the screen looks like that, very few people are going to check to see if there's 3.3 volts at LCD VDD, and that's exactly what you need to do. Over here, there's a couple of different power lines for your LCD. It's not like an iPhone. Uh, so you have one power line, which is PP3V3 SO LCD over here, and this power line that's going to pin 4 is going to the DDC part of the LCD. DDC is a protocol used for you to be able to tell what type of screen it is. So what resolution, what refresh rate, what model am I? So that's how the screen is going to communicate with the, ma the machine to tell what type of screen it is. So that has to happen first. Secondly, you'll get 3 volts to the LCD. This is the part that actually creates the image, and that's on pins 2 and 3. And the third power rail is going to be backlight, and that's the last one to come on. Um, that's on pins 21 and 22. But it typically follows this order on the older MacBooks that use LVDS. First, you need 3.3 volts for the DDC circuit. So you can see that this inductor here is, uh, that's going to be sending power to D DDC. Right behind it, you have the two pull-ups for LVDS DDC clock and DDC data. That's how, when you plug in a new screen, it automatically tells what the resolution is and all that good stuff. I think Apple learned a lesson from past models issues when new iPhones launch next month. Nope. Now, Jessa has a lot of really good videos on the audio IC issues, and you should definitely check out her channel. It's called iPad Rehab. 
That's iPad Rehab. There's a lot of good content there. So if you watch this stuff, you should definitely check out her channel. But she has a lot of videos on something called the audio IC issue. And it occurs because the iPhone 7, it, it flexes. So when you, when you move it back and forth, it flexes very similar to how the iPhone 6 Plus would flex. And that causes it to have flexion-based damage where pads will come off the board and stuff like that under chips. So Apple figured out the problem and fixed it with the 6S but then recreated it in the 7. They don't learn from their mistakes, and I don't think they ever will because people keep buying the products. So first, you need your 3 volts for your DDC circuit with any of these LVDS model MacBooks. Then you need 3 volts for the image circuit, which is LCD VDD, and then you need backlight. Now, the thing is, even if you don't have full voltage on image circuit, backlight will still come on. Backlight will still come on so long as there's anything on LCD VDD. If you have anything over zero on LCD VDD, backlight will come on, especially if the DDC circuit has come on and already communicated with the machine. So now what we have to do is correct this. So first thing we have to do is figure out why this happened to begin with and see if this occurred due to a short circuit to grounds on the image line. So uh, on the image power line. So I'm going to turn my meter back on here thanks to this beautiful stream deck that Paul got me. And let's see if we have a short to ground on the image line. There's no short to grounds on the image line. All right, so now what we have to do is remove this. And, well, that's probably going to be welded to that pad. And this is something you'll also see in some of Jess's videos where the, f especially, I believe, on the 6S, no backlight. On a lot of 6S backlight issues, you'll notice that the filter actually gets welded onto the pad in a, in a way. It's, it's that that's a common iPhone mess up, and that happens over here with this filter. Not with the backlight fuse, but a lot with the filter. And I'm going to finish this up as quickly as I can, because my ex-employee is in the front of the store, and I need to convince her to come back and work here. So I'm going to get on my hands and knees and grovel as much as I can. Much groveling. It's very hard to find good employees. When you find them, don't let them go ever. Seriously, like lock them in your basement. Get a good security system. Put a leash on them if you have to, but don't let them go. Especially in, yeah, do what you got to do. Should probably get a micro soldering pencil over here. But I don't want to change. I am disabled teen. I watch and do the same. Well, I think that's really cool that you're not letting a disability get in the way of doing this type of work. And if anybody tells you you can't do it because of a disability, you can just tell them to go F themselves. Okay. So now we have our inductor. I should reinforce that solder blob with a wire. This is, a, this is an example of sheer stubbornness and laziness. I don't want to get up to get the micro pencil iron and plug it into the hacko and hear the beeping. So I'm using this ridiculous BCM2 tip to do this job. Jess is probably watching and screaming at the screen right now because I'm using a BCM2 to micro solder. But I, I, I don't want to get up again. It's so I'm so micro soldering with a BCM2. This is pure stubborn stupidity. You should d do as I say, not as I do. Just get yourself a dual station. I didn't get myself a dual station because as an AGRX investor, I don't feel that I'm 
I don't, I, I'm worthy of it. I don't deserve it. Anybody dumb enough to stay in AGRX does not deserve to have another station. All right, now after this is done, we're going to test our work. Just gonna, and we can fix up this firewire circuit later. The firewire circuit can wait because you can see the firewire area. Doesn't look very nice here. But I'm just going to, let's just see if we got image first. You know, image first, f port that nobody's used since 2010 later. I have one test for any tool we stock at iPad Rehab. Would I get up and walk across the room to get this tool? That's the thing, Jessa. I, th that test doesn't work with me due to the amount of laziness. Because I wouldn't get up to get a lot of things that I genuinely need. All right, let's see. Does this turn on or blow up? Let's see if smoke emits. So no smoke emits from here. And we have a screen. And hey, we got an Apple logo. The Apple logo means that we do have image. So that is it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Now, I was going to plan a stream for a longer period of time, but I do have to go up to the front and grovel and beg and get on my knees and hope and pray and plead that my ex-employee will come back to work here because we, there's just nobody like Veneer. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Time to get to groveling. Don't delay. Bye today.